Hi, I'm Nina King, Vice President and Director of Athletics at Duke University. I'm chopping it up with Buck. Welcome to this edition of Chopping It Up with Buck. I'm Charles R. Buckle here at a different location. You can see a lot. We're in Durham, North Carolina at Duke University and I have Nina King. Nina, it was so good talking to you at ACC Media Football Kickoff that we kind of talked about doing this specifically. So when I sent you an email, I was a little shocked. I get an email back. Hey, come on up. So thanks for having us in and how have you been doing so far this season? Yeah, well, I'm glad you guys are here. This is great to have you. Welcome to Durham um, on a, a cold rainy day, but it'll be an exciting evening in Cameron tonight with Virginia Tech. Really excited. Um, and thanks for coming. I um, am appreciative for um, a platform to tell my story and hopefully inspire others who are looking to do the same thing in college athletics. Yeah, that, that was what impressed me the most. I'll tell you that uh, just understanding the task at hand of having to manage all this. You had the good fortune of being here and seeing it from working with Kevin White, which I think is great because you were COO, chief of staff, and then, then the uh, deputy uh, commissioner or deputy athletic director. Tell us a little bit about each one of those roles and how that got you ready to sit in a big chair. Sure. So just an incredible opportunity to um, learn from and be mentored by Kevin White. Um, and for those that don't know, he was my predecessor as the athletic director here at Duke, but um, had been an athletic director for 40 years. And I was the 31st person to have worked for him to become an AD. Wow. So quite a tree. He See, is he the goat. AD for tree. Sure. <laughs> AD tree for sure. 31? 31st. Yeah. Um, so the opportunity to learn the business from him. I mean, there's no one better in my mind. And, and really, uh, for 13 years, we worked right alongside each other here at Duke. And, and um, I didn't know it, but he was preparing me for this, whether it was at Duke or, or somewhere else. And so when he told me that he was getting ready to retire, I thought, oh, no, I have to go find another AD to go work yeah, for, yeah, and be a yeah, chief yeah. of staff, a new, a new department. And he said, no, 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 you were ready for this. And, and you guys so. did that at the Red Robin. Now, I'm not a yeah. I, 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 I saw <laughs> that and you said maybe the the food choice could have been a more hey, high but that's <laughs> a pretty simple eater <laughs> yeah. But yeah so tell me about that when you when when he hit you with that were, were you right away thinking yeah I can do this or oh I don't know mm -mm. what was it what took me some time to get there I was okay. very comfortable in my role and um, you know what he did really well was um, mentor me and prepare me um, you know brought me along to every meeting didn't ask for a plus one for every event um, everywhere where I could learn and be in the room um, and be visible frankly right alongside him he didn't ask he just brought me um, and so it really gave me a great opportunity to um, watch the inner workings of an athletic department on a university campus and, and interact with all of our constituents. And so, you know, it, it, it took me some time. I was comfortable, like I yeah. said, being behind the scenes. Um, it, it's a busy job, um, <laughs> obviously high, high pace, but also a pretty high profile. And so I, I, I didn't know um, if that was something that I really, you know, career wise, if that was my ultimate aspiration. And so it took me some time. Um, to think about and, and really discern is is this the career journey that I, I would want to set out um, on and so after after a bit decided okay yes let's go for it and it was an intense interview process we a search committee and, and he didn't have to weigh in because he knew he liked all. it but he was like I have to let very you go. good yeah. he, he was very good about that hands off and it's not his decision and um, and I appreciate that you know he gave me some advice along the way but he didn't have the answers to the test um, I had to, to um, complete the test on my own um, and obviously ultimately was successful and and um, really just thrilled for the opportunity to work with President Price and and I can't believe it's been a year and a half here That's, we are <laughs> <laughs> well and if you go back even before that at Notre Dame you guys had a bunch of people on the staff there that are all now ADs or college I, I almost called Notre Dame when I'm reading the articles the uh, the college administrator 
university because right. you it was like a melting pot of people yep. really getting ready and getting prepared for these opportunities. Absolutely. I mean, 31, the tree. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we, we had quite a staff when we were there at Notre Dame. And, and um, you know, you and I have talked about we've got uh, several uh, ADs in the triangle, all three of us in the triangle that graduated from Notre Dame, which is interesting because Notre Dame doesn't have a sport management program no. or a, you know, sports what is related it, what is major. It about Notre Dame that allows that to to be a breeding ground for college sure. administrators. I think it's you know the high profile nature of athletics at mm. Notre Dame. I mean it's it's really um, not unlike Duke, really part of the fabric of the university and and a meaningful, very visible one. Um, and all three of us uh, that are here in the triangle were very involved in in athletics while we were undergrads and and ultimately working in the department there and then spreading our wings and coming to North Carolina. It's <laughs> awesome. But if I even go back further, you know, you, you talked about it a little bit when we met before, but growing up in Tampa, you didn't play sports. You, you, but I say this, when people say they don't play sports, I said, well, what did you do? You were a dancer, ballet. So to me, that's still in that realm. But your mom had, you know, taking a job across from the high school so you could go do your work. What was it like growing up? with your mother and that, that experience and getting you prepared to mother and, and sure, yeah. lord over or be over, uh, help 775 kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I appreciate you saying uh, how adjacent my uh, ballet dancing was to athletics. I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> when I watch ballet dance, I, I mean, I'm envious. Yeah. I think I can dance. I'm a great <laughs> chair dancer, but I cannot do the things, the athleticism it. that it takes to do yes. some of that. And, you know, I wasn't um, a professional <laughs> ballet dancer by any means. We have to remember, you know, six, seven yeah, years yeah, old growing up yeah. doing ballet. But, um, you know, I was a fan, a, a sports fan in Tampa. It's a great professional sports town. Um, I remember when, when the Rays came to Tampa. I remember when the Lightning came to Tampa. I grew up a Bucks fan way okay. back in the orange yeah, and red yeah, days. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so, you know, it, it was fun to be around sport um, but you mentioned my mama you know it was just the two of us uh, growing up um, in Tampa and yeah. we were pretty close we we obviously had to be since we were uh, it was just the two of us but she worked so hard and and I really learned the value of, of sacrifice um, and do anything for your kids um, so that they could have a, a good life I mean we didn't have much um, but at the same time I had everything uh, it was it was so um, so great and and I realized that so much more now that I'm a mom and I have two two boys of my own and and um, I'm so fortunate that she uh, moved here to Durham and she yeah. lives with us and takes care of our kids often and so it's fun to still have her around here. I love the story also about when you were going to Notre Dame and you kind of were deciding she said she wasn't gonna let money be the factor yep. uh, a contributor to stopping you so she ended up getting a job at Delta mm -hmm. that probably allowed her to fly to see you and you to exactly. fly home in the winter to get, to get away from <laughs> yep. South Man. See, she's smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, she she had to take a second job to make some money and, and was smart to, to find one where she got some flying benefits and certainly did come visit a lot. Um, but, you know, I mean, she, she didn't want the, the financial part to hold me back from um, aspiring to, to go to a really great university. I had a full academic scholarship yeah, at a state yeah. school, and she said, nope, go, go do this Notre Dame thing, and it worked great. out pretty well. That's awesome. You, I always want to know, were there times, though, when you hit a, a rough patch where you thought, I can't do this, mm -hmm. like I can't finish law school, mm -hmm. or I can't do this at Notre Dame. I, it, did you hit a spot? I, I know I have at points in my life, but yeah. it's always interesting to hear. Yeah, you know, not so much in school. Okay. I think I was surrounded by so many wonderful people, and including my, my college classmates and uh, my law school classmates. Those are some of my best friends still to this day. Um, and so to be in it together with a really great group of friends. Um, but I, I really kind of sought out and, and um, utilized the resources um, on my campuses, both in undergrad and, and law school, and, and really tried to find, you know, where where are areas that can help me get through this mm -hmm. journey? And so, you know, I wouldn't say it was a terribly challenging um, um, atmosphere. It was, you know, the snow in South Bend was. <laughs> the first <laughs> time I gray. saw it, it was yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And then I called home the next week and said, I want to come home. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, it, it just, again, I had, had uh, you know, really understood the, the value of hard mm -hmm. work yeah. and and, um, you know, putting my my all into it and ultimately realized great um, undergrad and then law school yeah. degrees. You're a voracious reader, so that's one thing. And I'm sure you 
I probably wasn't as strong a student undergrad as I should have been, yeah. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> I learned. But, but something about uh, talking to Sporty Geralds, a, a venue management guy that's been around, did a show with him and he said, readers are leaders. Mm -hmm. And that just struck me because I learned at an early age that you have to read, you have to know what's there, and you have to kind of discern for yourself. How do you translate that to the young student athletes here at Duke? I know they're all understanding of it, but even for your own kids, that's something that is, I think is just so valuable for anyone to yeah. have. Yes, well, I'm going to make sure my kids watch this so that they understand <laughs> and hear it from somebody hey, other listen, than mom. <laughs> I'll tell you, my mother, who's a single parent mm -hmm. like yours, uh, had me in the summer, instead of taking five to ten books that the school usually said, I had to read about 20. Oh, my goodness. Now, some of them I got away with because I knew, oh, this is a 30, yeah, 50 yeah, page yeah, book. Quick one. But I did. I started, that started early for me, and it got me really interested in reading. Yeah. And Richard Wright and, you yeah. know, just yeah, different, important. yeah, you know, people that I hadn't, I didn't know, but I knew their stories. I could read them and understand. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it is it is really important. And I certainly don't have as much time now to do it as, <laughs> as I would like. But you know what I tell young folks all the time? It's important to be a student of, of the the industry, the business, yeah. the game. And so in college, you're, you're reading a lot for your classes and whatever subject matter that might be. But it doesn't change when you um, go out into the, the work world, the workforce, the real world, as, as some say. But um, you know, it's for me, I'm reading about our business yeah. and whether it's articles or leadership books or, um, you know, different business type books um, so that I can kind of understand, not kind yeah. of, so that I can yeah, understand yeah, no, yeah. Um, trends, issues, challenges, things that are going on relative to what I'm doing every day. And so, you know, young, young people that are interested in getting into college athletics, that's often the advice that I give them, you know, be a student of the game, have, have some sort of working knowledge about the big issues so you can be conversant, knowledgeable about whatever is going on, and there's not a lack of things going on in college uh, athletics. Yeah, <laughs> well, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. I'm with Nina King, Athletic Director at Duke, we're chopping it up with Buck. We'll be right back. At Heslip Wealth Advisors, our goal is to help small businesses develop quality retirement plans for their employees through our Lunch and Learn seminars. We provide lunch and learning tools to help your company succeed and unmatched customer service. Chopping it up with Buck, also brought to you by Thin Energy. ThinEnergy.com. All right, we're back on Chopping It Up with Buck. We have Nina King, Athletic Director at Duke. So, Nina, we were talking about reading, and I know, uh, what what do you have currently that you're looking at? Uh, yeah. On that, because I know work takes a lot of time. It but, does, it yeah. does. I'm, I'm typically, I read some articles on the internet first thing in the morning, <laughs> uh, but in my backpack, so on the airplane, um, which I'm on often, um, right now I have Brene Brown's Dare to Lead, Okay. Um, and then I've got Michelle Obama's new book in my backpack, okay. On Deck. Good, yeah. good. Brene Brown, my wife wrote me in the going, I'll say that. But when I went, I was so impressed with her. And she's from Texas, like I am, so that that, that was an easy sell. But I, I, I love, like, rumble. Instead of having meetings or different things, she calls it a rumble, so you can get into the heart of the meeting and get through just the little things about her. I think you're going to like yeah, that book. Good, I excited. might have to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. do a little book yeah, swap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you're not reading, mm -hmm and the college landscape is changing as it is, how have you guys in the ACC, and Duke in particular, been able to stay with that? Because there's a lot going on in college football. There's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at the Pac-12 becoming the Pac-10 mm -hmm. with USC, UCLA moving to the Big Ten. Yeah. ACC has its grant of right deals that only you guys have access to. What is happening with college football? Yeah, well, so this is like a four-hour show, right? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, no, so then listen, the ACC is a, a terrific conference, yes. and Jim Phillips is, is an incredible leader, one of the Mother ones that was on 31. staff at Notre Dame, and um, I'm, I'm just so grateful that he's here and, and um, leading us through these choppy waters, if you will. But, um, you know, we are a, a great group of 15 institutions, very okay. collegial. We have very open, honest candidates conversations and we're all in it to provide an 
athletic academic yeah. experience to our student athletes in our conference. And so um, what is the very best experience that we can provide? And of course, all of us have different visions for our mm -hmm. different institutions, but as a league, um, you know, I, I'm very comfortable that in, in saying that we are all, all in this together. So of course, we're watching everything that's going on out there. And the ultimate goal is to be, you know, bigger, faster, stronger. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, we, we watch the landscape and, and try to think, you know, in, in our own unique way, what is going to make the ACC the very best conference? Yeah. Um, and so conversations are, are um, they're great, uh, productive conversations. We've got league meetings several times a year and, and I'm really just grateful for the opportunity to sit around the table with my athletic director colleagues and have those conversations. 14 in football, 15 in yep. basketball with yep. Notre Dame, right? Yep. So what's interesting is, why can't you rope them into making 15 <laughs> on football? <laughs> so Jim Phillips is your next guest. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I always tease when I see any athletic director because I know they're the moving part that all, you guys spent time there. So it's interesting, all of these ACC folks in Notre Dame says, no, we're still gonna stay on this island. Yeah. Jack yeah. Schwarber was a long time person uh, in Indiana that I got to know and I'm, I'm not surprised at some of the things but I, I it's such a big brand mm -hmm. speaking of brand what about the Duke brand it's you guys have gotten uh, new coaches Kara Lawson John Shire Mike Elko really dynamic coaches and, and, and I know there's others, but those are the three that come to mind. Tell us a little bit about that because you've been really instrumental in ushering those folks in. Yeah, I mean, it is, um, you know, our, our three high profile coaches um, are all new. And then along with me, it's kind of a, a new day in Duke yeah. Athletics, if you will. And um, Kara, I had the opportunity to hire while I was deputy AD and overseeing women's basketball the year before I became AD. Um, John Shire, two weeks after I became yeah. AD, and then <laughs> Coach Elko about six months later. So a lot of change. Um, but I, you know, look at all three of those and, and you, they are Duke and mm -hmm. they are the absolute best fit for um, their respective programs and, and Duke University, frankly. Um, they represent us so well and, and really understand um, the mission of Duke mm -hmm. University and, and what it takes to, um, to win um, and within Duke Athletics and, and really provide a meaningful experience for the young people that they lead. So I'm just so happy to be in the foxhole with, with those three along with the rest of our coaches I mean, we have 27 sports and um, and so many moving parts here um, but yeah I mean you, you know you mentioned brand and, and the Duke brand and it is such a strong global brand is, I mean yeah. it's it's incredible um, in not quite a hundred years what this university has built itself up to be wow. um, the university is going to celebrate its centennial here in 2024 and I mean it's just amazing how far it, it's coming mean, you would think it's an old university yeah, just kind I, I of just built on its more, achievement yeah, more time than that that's yeah. interesting when you yeah. say that. Um, and athletics is, as we like to say, the front porch of the university will we'll draw you in with a, a basketball or a lacrosse game and, and um, come in and explore everything else we do so well here in, in Durham and, and around the world. We have a campus in China and um, we're competing everywhere. And it, it's just absolutely amazing what this university is doing. Now, you're considered a basketball school, mm -hmm. but you have talked about football really being what you want it to be more of. You gotta do things in the uh, weight room, just different upgrades that have to happen. I think it was 20 years ago that things were working on, maybe I could be wrong by year two. You had David Cutcliffe, a great coach, and then you get Elko, you guys are, I, I, I can sense things are changing with the dynamics of Duke football as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're an everything school, not just basketball. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, you know, at, at one point, both yeah. our soccer teams were ranked in the top 10. We were a soccer school right now. Both, uh, you know, we've got great spring sports. And so we're, we're a fill in the blank school at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, football is incredibly important. And, and we haven't been shy talking about um, the, the importance of its success uh, because it it really then benefits our whole athletic department and in kind of this bigger collegiate athletics landscape. Um, you know, we're, we're not shy about talking about this as a business. Um, you know, we, we need to generate revenues um, in order to fund the rowing program, the fencing yeah. program, all of the rest of our, our student athletes and their experience. And so um, football as, as a driver brings in most of the revenue, mm -hmm. um, whether it's via media deals or, you know, putting folks in Wallace Wade and buying pop 
popcorn mm -hmm. and and all of the the kind of um, ancillary things around uh, football game day. So it's really important for it to be successful because if it's not successful, then TV doesn't want to put us on and people don't want to come to games and buy popcorn and um, and so the the success of football is is really important and I'm so excited that that Coach Elko is here and he's got an incredible staff and there's just kind of a rejuvenated energy around Duke football and and you know we really realized um, as an administration and, and with President Price's support and and help um, you know the investments that we need to make so that we can sustain this this program um, and so you know we had Coach Elko had a great year one was, um, and wow. so now we need to sustain and yeah, and it is yeah. and you know we we have seen in the past where we've had um, periods of time where Duke football has been successful and so the the key is to not let it slip and gotcha. so how do we continue to make sure that that we're supporting it and resourcing it in the proper way and what does that look like because you you just said it best I think it was really good season a little bit better than expectations but it's always harder to follow yeah. that back up NIL transfer portal there's a lot of stuff happening in college football that makes it easier to get better, but yeah. also can be challenging. Yeah. To get, did you take you a look at our schedule for 2032? <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> a, a little, uh, you know, it gives me a little anxiety, but yeah. it, that's what it's all about, yeah. right? I mean, everybody's yeah. got a tough schedule, no yeah. matter who's on the schedule. So, yeah, I mean, it is, it's, um, you know, things are changing. The landscape's changing. You alluded to the transfer portal, NIL, all of those things. There's so many things. And so how do we properly position Duke to take advantage of the change? I mean, it's here and whether good or bad, I mean, NIL, you know, is a good thing, but the way we're doing it is really terrible, but it is our current reality. And so how do we adapt to this, this moment of reality and, and how do we participate and make sure that we are doing things in a very Duke-like way um, so that we can be successful. And so that's the challenge. That's what keeps me up at night. Well, you don't have to say it, but I'll say it. They need a, a czar of college football. They need a commissioner for college football. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we have said that for 10, 15, maybe 20 years now but it hadn't happened but what's interesting though is the other thing that I think you're doing a really nice job of here is the diversity equity equity inclusion and then belonging I thought that was really neat you teach a class on campus is it pretty, I'm sure it's pretty hard to get into <laughs> I'm sure they make it people want to get on and get in that class right fun. away but just from the standpoint of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and belonging, tell us a little bit about that and what that means for Duke. Sure. So, I mean, it is one of the pillars of our university mm -hmm. that we, um, you know, it, it have the most inclusive um, environment where our students and ultimately our student athletes feel that they belong, um, as well as our employees, um, all of our coaches and, and staff. Um, and so, just recently, we published a DEIB uh, strategic plan. I'm so proud of the work that um, our, our folks within athletics have done to um, really put some um, you know stated goals with action um, under each goal and we put it out there for the world to see so that we can hold ourselves accountable and the world can hold us accountable yeah. um, to make sure again that, that you know we have the, the most the inclusive environment it was it was from yeah. a university that you know uh, all universities have had their issues in the past but for you guys to do that what was that Feedback yeah, great display. feedback, and yeah. but you know, remember, it's early. Anybody can publish anything and say, say, here's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, the test will be: Are we living up to what we said we're gonna do, and really over, over achieving what we said we're gonna do? And and we'll see that. You know, if if um, our student athletes and and our staff and coaches are, are having the best experience that they can within Duke athletics, and and um, we've got a strong culture here and a great community, a great family, and so you know, just to ensure that this is the place that everybody wants to be whether you're in it or you want to come into it and, <laughs> yeah. and, and do this with us um, you know we're gonna make sure that that it is um, a diverse experience across um, you know all races ethnicities genders and and um, you know that we're representing um, uh, the most diverse environment possible for our student-athletes yeah. who are a pretty darn diverse yeah, uh, yeah. cohort what's been the hardest challenge or biggest challenge you've had sitting in that chair I mean you know just one or two maybe things that have just wow and now that you've gotten through it you can look back as a learning experience or just to help you yeah I mean things uh, that, that we've already talked yeah, about yeah. right like hiring coaches um, is is extremely hard and and thankfully I had been through it um, with with Kevin and you know kind of under his guidance they and say leadership. they say all athletic directors in their drawer have like a, a list of 
Well, it doesn't yeah. a drawer now. It's on sure. your computer. <laughs> sure. Yeah, a list of names. Yeah, a list of yeah, names. Yeah, I mean, you never mm -hmm. want to get caught off guard. Mm -hmm. And um, you never know when you're yeah. going to need to be yeah. hiring a coach, whether a coach leaves on their own, whether you decide to separate with a coach, or God forbid something happens. And unfortunately, in our department, that did happen. Our uh, head swim coach had passed away this past December. Um, and so, you know, you, you always need to be prepared. And I'm always kind of window shopping. When I'm watching games, I'm looking yeah. on the sidelines, yeah. looking at other coaches and so you actually uh, listen to us when we're in the booth well i wouldn't say that <laughs> <laughs> um, if so, you know what you're talking about right well right, right. I, I got you. <laughs> yeah. um, so being prepared you, i think you're just kind of really it, surveying absolutely. people that can help with the Duke brand or just right. kind of what kind of fit. Who's going to be a fit? Yeah. Yes, yeah. because we are a pretty unique place and, and not just any student athlete can get into school here, can point. compete here, and so not just any coach can can really come in and work here. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that was a huge challenge. And, and also, you know, with, with both football and men's and women's basketball, those are quick hires. And so the intensity yeah. with which you're working, I mean, again, I'm not by myself. I'm working with a search committee, I'm working with a search firm, um, working with President Price and, and a handful of his administrators, but ultimately it's my a, decision. Yeah, and so yeah. just feeling good about um, the, the, the preparation and then the work in the moment and then ultimately the decision, it's, it's intense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought what was interesting, football has had general managers, but you hired Rachel Baker as a general manager for college basketball, and it looked like you were probably getting your your phone, yeah, yeah. email were blowing up after <laughs> yeah. that. Tell us what went into that, because I thought it was really neat to see that and how it played out for, for college basketball. Yeah, so that is all credit to John Shire and, and um, really his vision. And okay. um, you know, this is why I can say he he is the perfect fit for this job. He really took some time to think about what do I need to be successful? And in, in 2022 at the time, um, you know, what are the pieces that we need to put in place to move this program into the next chapter, the next iteration? There's no playbook for replacing I an icon. <laughs> I mean, That's true. it is it uh, <laughs> absolutely amazing the the way that he's kind of taken the reins and so you know identifying um, this general manager role we we kind of talked a lot about the title he had a, a bunch of ideas and and he ultimately you know sat we sat right here and and he said I would like to hire this general manager here's who I'm looking at and here are the roles and responsibilities and and um, you know it really it made a lot of sense to me and mm -hmm. and Rachel in the job made a ton of sense yeah. I mean that her background. Um, what she's done in sport, not just in college athletics, but what she's done in sport over her career, really is, has been terrific, and, and she's been great for the program. Well, a, a woman of color. Yep. And, and, and is that a stepping stone for maybe the a athletic administration, AD roles, or just something along those lines? Or It could be. Yeah. I don't know that that's her career aspiration, yeah, yeah. Um, but it certainly could be. You know, there are no, there is no linear career path that's to <laughs> administration and, and certainly not to an athletic director um, seat. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for those, for people who want to be an athletic director or really to be a, a collegiate athletics administrator, it's about finding your passion and, and re really utilizing your skill set um, to do something that you are interested in, where you can contribute to a department. Um, in a positive, meaningful way. And so for Rachel, I mean, she's she is in the perfect role for her skill set and her background. That's good. Well, we'll take another short break. Uh, we'll be right back with Nina King, Athletic Director at Duke University. At Heslip Wealth Advisors, our goal is to help small businesses develop quality retirement plans for their employees through our Lunch and Learn seminars. We provide lunch and learning tools to help your company succeed and unmatched customer service. Chopping it up with Buck, also brought to you by Thin Energy. ThinEnergy.com. Chopping it up with Buck, Nina King, <laughs> Duke Athletic Director. It, it's been great spending some time with you. But one thing you, you've done that I was really interested in, because it's really started to grow, is women's college basketball. You were a chair on the committee for that. Tell us about that and tell us how you saw that growing. And it's, it's still, I mean, the final four for women's basketball. I'm all in. Right? I'm telling you, oh, exciting. I love it. And they moved, you know, when you moved it 
to different times. You know, it made perfect sense. Yeah. I love it. It's been really neat to watch women's basketball grow and, and at, at every level, frankly. Yeah. I mean, youth participation and, and college athletics and the WNBA. And so, uh, you know, people are all in, in into women's basketball. Um, I'm just, I had an incredible opportunity to um, serve on the NCAA Division One Women's Basketball Committee for four years. Um, and two of the four years is the chair. And, um, you know, it just it's it was so meaningful to me personally to be able to, um, you know, be a small part of, of something that that's just so impactful on the lives of, of young women. And, um, you know, it's it's a lot of work now. I mean, <laughs> folks think that it's it's glamorous to get to select. Absolutely. We all have day yeah, jobs. Yeah, and so yeah. uh, 10 folks on the committee um, until last year, it expanded to 12 folks. And we all work in either institutions or conference offices, handful of athletic directors and and administrators. Um, watching a lot of basketball um, you know folks think it's it's just we show up and select 68 teams <laughs> to participate but um, it's really it's and it's not just looking at a team on paper I mean yeah. you really need to have a, a good understanding of of um, the game and how they play and you know what do you, style when you look at and, that like, do they get it for you cut down and condensed so you don't have to, you know, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, you now, have to I, have I watch way. the film much like coaches do, yeah, and I can fast so. forward, mm -hmm. and I can watch a quarter, or yeah. I can watch, you know, the end of a game if needed, you know, kind of pick pick which moments. Um, but, yeah, I watched a, a lot of basketball, and, um, you know, it, it's fun. And, and go, then once you get to the tournament, it's that's where you kind of, like, take a breath and, okay, <laughs> watch your work yeah, unfold, let, let right? Out, like, see right? how yeah. the, who's yeah. beating who, and, and how does the bracket end up? Um, but, but so much fun. Unfortunately, I, I or fortunately, was um, a part of the committee and, and the chair of the committee back in 2021 when we had um, the tournament in San, San Antonio yeah. and the weight room issue, if you I will. Know. And, that, yeah. and um, the weight room issue, you know, it, it uncovered um, some really systemic gender inequities. And the, the, the disparities. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. And um, incredibly embarrassing uh, um, for sport um, at, at the time, but it, it really really um, gave an opportunity for us to get things right for, for women in sport and, and specifically women's basketball. And there was really some low-hanging fruit um, that the NCAA and membership, we were really able to, to tackle, you know, allowing the women's tournament to utilize March Madness like yeah. the men do and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, providing the same number of postseason opportunities on the women's side as the men's. And so, you know, we're, we're watching uh, some of those changes and, and really seeing how they're going to bear out. But ultimately, um, um, the goal is to provide the most equitable experience possible. And, and you know, what that did, it was... Um it was relative to Division One women's basketball, but it caused a lot of us institutions and conferences to kind of look inward and on our own campuses and in our conferences, are we providing equitable experiences for females? And so, um, I'm I'm grateful now I can say you know that that yeah. for what it's led to for mm -hmm. us to be able to really just ensure that we're providing equal opportunities, yeah, not just using Title Nine as lip service, but right. really using Doing it to it. give people that opportunity. Yeah. I, I, I love that, having a young daughter to, yeah. who played sports in high school but didn't play past that, but you, you, you're you yeah. right, just making sure that they have that opportunity to participate. Yep. Game the night, yes. Virginia Tech. Yeah. Tell us about that. I, I, what's your pregame ritual? Do you, <laughs> sure. do, you, do you and Coach Shire <laughs> high five each other? What is it like? Yeah, before? <laughs> you know, I typically don't see him before the okay. game. Okay. Um, we talked yesterday. Um, if, away games, if I'm not there, we'll talk the you know kind of the night before on the phone um, and just a, a check in. Um, so don't, I you know want to kind of stay out of his yeah. space. He certainly doesn't need me on game day. Um, so you know my game day. It depends. Um, today happened to be a, a busy Saturday full of meetings. Um, but, you know, any given pregame, I'm meeting with a recruit and their family or a prospective uh, student and their family talking about Duke. Um, uh, I always go on the radio with our, our Blue Devil Network folks um, right before, an hour and a half before. And then we've got premium spaces where a bunch of our donors and season ticket holders gather before the game. And so hit those spots and shake hands and see folks. Well, that's great. Well, we're going to end it with the two-minute drill. What okay. we do is we, we try to let you score. Right. And in football, Ooh. you got to take it down the field and make it happen. Right. Now, and these, these should be pretty good.
good for you because okay. I, I, I got some intel and some recon on All right. It. <laughs> I'm excited. I haven't heard these yet. So. <laughs> but Beyonce tickets, do mm. you have any? Oh, I don't. I haven't been to a concert in forever. <laughs> we Big go to so Beyonce many events. Yes. Okay, and okay. we go to so many events, though, you know, for, for work, yeah, if you yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't even think about it. All right. So how did you meet your husband? <laughs> you did get intel. So. Um, went to Tulane Law School, and so I was a student yeah. uh, in New Orleans. Um, late, late at night, met him in a bar. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And, he, and it, it worked. 15 years married and two kids later. <laughs> well, but also, too, one night you were going out, and he hurt his ankle playing hoops. Yeah, And yeah. then you brought him a burrito, was that? <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> I guess that's what sealed the deal. He said, that's the girl I want to yeah. marry. <laughs> he said, here's a burrito. I'm yeah. still going with and my I'm girl. And I'm still going out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is too funny. Yeah. Fish or steak? Fish. Okay. Yeah. What kind? What is there a certain kind um, of fish? Yeah, really kind of any light fish. Yeah. I'm a big sea bass person, grouper growing sea up in bass. Florida. Ooh, sea bass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my wife makes a really good sea Ooh, bass. I'm but, coming uh, over for dinner. You, hey, anytime. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So, uh, with your sons, mm -hmm. what is the craziest thing they've done just to make you when you like, oh my goodness. The uh, boys, we're, we're, we're kind of rambunctious when we go That's up. like every Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. I mean, it's constant chaos in my house and every day I'm saying, oh my gosh. <laughs> so you gotta just rein them in. Yeah, huh? All the time, all but, the time. But you love the energy. And, and and you got two that'll grow up and they'll be mama's yeah. boys. Yes. For, what, what are their names? My oldest is Connor okay. and then uh, Austin is my All right. Well, you yeah. score on that one. That's a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting us. This, this has been great. Really Thank look you. forward to, to doing this again. Oh, see, we don't, we, we're starting to have okay. gift Yes, bags. I yeah. love it. Thank you so much. I don't even Ooh, have this a hat. is good. All right. I don't even have you a don't? Hat. No, okay. but it's you take that hat and you right here. Yeah. <laughs> You guys, I'm coming here, or I want you to come oh, every wow. time. Look at this. Oh, this is really awesome, you guys. Thank you. See? You need one of these, too? Uh, I, yeah. I know people, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Thank you. That was fun. So thank, thank you very much thank for coming on Chopping It Up with Buck. <laughs>